right everybody what is going on this video we're going to look at optimization problems uh, applied maximum and minimum problems all right so I've got eight examples to work uh, but before we get started on the problems let me just give you a quick list of steps to so to go by in order to solve these things so the first thing you want to do, you want to determine the quantity, determine what you what you want to maximize or minimize. And then if possible, you want to draw a picture of it. You're not going to always be able to draw a picture, but if you can, draw it. Uh, then you're going to write an equation for what you for what needs to be maximized or minimized. Uh, you want to get it in terms of one variable. Uh, you want to take the derivative of that, then you want to set it equal to zero, and then you can check to see whether it's a maximum or minimum, either using the, you can use the first derivative test or second derivative test. I'll use the test on, on some of them. I'm not, I'm, I won't do it on all of them, but I'll, I'll mention it. And yeah, and that's, that's basically what you need to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And, and some of the problems that you work, they're going to give you the equation that they want you to maximize or minimize, like in this first, in this first problem that we're working. You notice here how they give us the equation, but that's not going to always be the case. And probably, I would say more than likely on, the te on a test, your teacher is probably going to give you a problem where you have to come up with the equation yourself. I know if you're in my class, then that's probably what it's going to be. All right, it says, so an automobile manufacturer in testing a new engine on one of its new models found that the efficiency E of the engine as a function of the speed S of the car was given by E equals 0.768S minus 0.00004S cubed. Here, E is measured in percent and S is measured in kilometers per hour. What is the maximum efficiency of the engine? All right, so we want to maximize this. And, you know, luckily for us in this problem, they give us the equation, so this one's going to be easy to solve. We've got the equation, so all we do is take the derivative. All right, so we take the derivative. That's going to be 0.768 minus 0.00012s squared. You know, just power rule, it was simple to take the derivative on this one. And, and and most of the problems that that in that are involved, most of the equations that you're going to set up for these optimization problems, for the most part, they're pretty easy to find the derivatives, pretty basic. You know, I mean, you could run into something that's difficult to take the derivative of, but more than likely not. All right, so now let's set the derivative equal to zero. And so let's move the point seven, or we can move this over, it doesn't matter, point seven six eight equals point zero 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 one two s cubed. And so we get s cubed is equal to point seven six eight over point zero 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 one two. And so we get oh, I'm sorry. Look at that. I already messed up. That should be S squared, okay? See the squared? I don't know why I wrote cubed. I think I was looking at this when I wrote, when I was writing the exponent, so. But it's S squared equals, and if you divide this, you get 6,400, and so S is equal to, well, what's the square root of that? That's 80. Now, keep in mind, it's plus or minus but you know we're not going to be, the minus is not one of the solutions. It can't be negative, so it's the positive 80 kilometers per hour. And, and we can show that this is a maximum. We can use the this right here, whoop, not x. S is equal to 79. S is equal to 
81. Remember when you were graphing and you were finding relative max and mins or determining where it's increasing and decreasing, how you would, you know, plot the critical number here and then choose a number from each region. So we would, we'll take the 79, plug it into the derivative here. And when you plug that into the derivative, that gives you a positive. The 81, plug it into the derivative, that's going to give you a negative, and you can see it's a maximum there. All right. Now, what do they want to know? They want to know what is the maximum efficiency of the engine. So we've got to take the 80 and plug it back into the original. And so we get E of 80 is equal to 0.768 times 80 minus 0.4 times 80 cubed. And this ends up giving us 40.96. So, you know, we can just go ahead and say about 41% efficiency. And so this would be your answer. All right, so that's the that's the first example. And look, all of the problems are work just like this. The only difference that we're going to have is they're probably not going to give you the equation. You're going to have to we're going to have to come up with it on our own. Okay, and I don't know while I was working that problem if you could hear the cats in the background. So. That's what that was if you heard a weird noise. All right, let's look at this one. Find the number that exceeds its square by the greatest amount. A number that exceeds its square by the greatest amount. So what we're looking here for here is a difference. And, you know, I use the, a capital D. You could use a lowercase d. You could use F. You could use Y. It doesn't matter. Just... Pick a, pick a letter. So a number that it exceeds its square by the greatest amount. So if x is the number, we're going to do x minus its square. All right, so so let's see what we get here. I mean, you know, that that's real simple, just exceeds its square by the greatest amount. So here's the number, it exceeds its square. We want that difference to be as big as possible. Okay. All right. So we've got d prime is 1 minus 2x. 1 minus 2x equals 0. So here we get x equal 1 half. And, and that's your answer. Uh, I mean, we can just do this real quick. We can pick x equal 1 fourth, x equal 1. If you take the one fourth, plug it into the derivative, that's one minus one half, that's positive. Plug the one in, one minus two, that's negative. You can see that's a maximum there. And so it would be x equal one half is the maximum. That was a quick, easy problem there. They're gonna get more difficult, so don't worry. All right. A rectangular corral is to be enclosed with 1,600 feet of fencing. Find the maximum possible area of the corral. All right. So notice in the first two problems, we didn't draw a picture. Okay. We couldn't draw a picture. But remember at the beginning, the steps I gave you. If you can draw a picture, draw it. All right, so let's let's draw this picture. There's our rectangle, and we can label it x, x, y, y. And if you want to name this one, the the two sides here y, and these two sides x, that's fine. It doesn't matter. All right. So, what do we want to maximize here? Okay, what do we want to maximize? We want to find the maximum possible area. So we've got area is equal to x times y, length times width, area of a rectangle. All right. Now remember, remember what I told what I mentioned at the beginning. The, the equation that you want to maximize 
you want to you want to have it in terms of one variable but notice here we've got an x and a y so somehow we've got to get this in terms of one variable so let's see if there's any other information they give us well they tell us a rectangular corral is to be enclosed with 1600 feet of fencing so that means all the fencing around is 1600 feet so that would mean 1600 is equal to 2x plus 2y right that's the perimeter of the rectangle and so look what we can do here we can solve this for y and then plug it into here and then it'll all be in terms of x or if you wanted to you could solve this for x plug it in here and then we would have everything in terms of y, of y. well let's get everything in terms of x yes we could do y but it's just we're, we're used to seeing we're used to seeing it in terms of x it's just i don't know you know like i said it doesn't matter but but typically we when we see our functions and stuff they're in terms of x so if you can get it in terms of x just put it in terms of x unless it makes the problem a lot more difficult to work okay so I get 2y is equal to 1600 minus 2x. Divide everything by 2. I get 800 minus x. So that's y. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this value and plug it in for y. Because that's what y is. And so I've got the area is x times 800 minus x. And so the area is 800 hundred x minus x squared there's our equation that's what we want to maximize we got it in terms of one variable so now let's take the derivative so that's 800 minus 2x so 800 minus 2x equals 0 and that's going to give us x is equal to 400 and like us like earlier you know we can show that it's going to be increasing here decreasing there I'm not going to go through all that but X is 400 well let's see what do they want to know? find the maximum possible area okay all right so let's get Y Y is equal to 800 minus X which is 800 minus 400 which equals 400 see this is Y and so I'm going to take the 400, plug it in for x, and so now the maximum possible area is x times, see, x times y, so that's 400 times 400, which is 160,000 square feet. So that's the maximum possible area for the corral. All right. All right, this is going a little quicker than I thought we're already to the halfway point all right and th they're going to get a little more difficult so don't worry all right so the strength s of a beam with a rectangular cross section is directly proportional to the product of its width w and the square of its depth d find the dimensions of the strongest beam that can be cut from a log with a circular cross section that is 16 inches in diameter. All right, so let's let's draw a picture. Okay, this one might be a, this this one is a little more confusing to figure out how you want to draw it, but we've got a log, right? We've got this log, and we want to cut a square beam from it. I'm not a square, but a rectangular beam, okay? And it tells us the strength S of a beam with a rectangular cross section is directly proportional to the product of its width, W, okay? Here's the width, and its depth, D. Here's D. So S is equal to K times W times D squared. See, it's, it's directly proportional to the product of its width and depth squared 
and then remember times k. All right, so we've got two variables here, right? It's in two variables, w and d. k, remember, k is a constant. Okay, remember, varies directly, varies inversely. Okay, so varies jointly. Remember all that? You always have k times whatever, or k divided by, all right? So somehow we've got to get this either all in terms of w or all in terms of d. So which one's going to be easier? Well, let's see. How are we going to do that? Do they give us any more information? Well, it tells us that the log is 16 inches in diameter. So wouldn't that mean that this distance here is 16? This is a right angle. And so we have 16 squared is equal to W squared plus D squared. All right, Pythagorean theorem. All right, now we can solve this for W, get everything in terms of uh, D. But look, if I solve for W, then I'll have to take the square root of it, right, and plug the square root in there. But look at this. This is just D squared. So doesn't this say that D squared is, let's say 16 squared, that's what, 256, and then minus W squared? So look at this. I can put this in the place of D squared. See, this is d squared here. That's d squared. Well, what's d squared? It's 256 minus w squared. So s is k times w times 256 minus w squared. And so s is k times 256 w minus w cubed. All right. So now let's take the derivative. So the derivative is k times, and that's going to be 256 minus 3w squared. There's our derivative. Now, don't let that don't let that mess you up. Don't think we're using the product rule here because this is just the this is a constant. See, look, I could have written. Let me do it over here. I could have written s. Let me do it in a different color so it doesn't mess us up. I could have I could have written s and I could have distributed the k 256w okay k times 256w minus kw cubed and if I took that derivative that would be uh, 256k right because the 256 times k is a constant minus 3kw squared and then if I factor out a k that's 256 minus 3w squared. See, that's this. You get the same thing. It's just easier to leave that k outside the parentheses because it's not a variable. It's a constant. All right. And now we're going to set this equal to zero. So I have 256 minus 3w squared equals zero. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't need to worry about that k because it's a constant. That constant is never going to be zero. But this, I set this equal to zero. And so I get W squared is 256 over 3, which tells me W is 16 over the square root of 3. Okay. That's when we take the square root of it, which is about 9.24 inches. Okay. And, and yes, we could go and show that it's a maximum. Okay. And see that. Let's see, what does it want to know? The strength of that. Find the dimensions of the Strong's beam that can be cut from a log with a circular cross section. Okay. Yeah, so we want the strongest, the maximum strength. All right. And so we got, we've got W, but now we need to know what... Uh, d is well we've got we're solved for d squared you see that we're solved for d squared so we know d is equal to the square root of 256 minus 
w squared. And so I'm going to get d is equal to the square root of 256 minus, and what's w squared? w squared is 256 over 3. 256 over 3. And let me draw that 3 a little better. And if you punch that into your calculator, you end up getting 13.1 inches. So that would be the dimensions to give us the strongest beam. Okay. All right, moving right along. All right, we, we're halfway done. We got four more problems to work. And if you're still watching, keep watching. We've got some, got some better problems coming up. Some a little more difficult ones. All right, so find the point on the parabola y equals x squared that is nearest to the point 6, 3. All right, so here we want to, let's draw a picture. So I'm going to draw this picture here. There's the parabola. And I've got the point 6, 3 is going to be about right, at, right here. And I've got some point on the parabola, and I want this distance to be a minimum because I want it nearest to the point. So at what point on this parabola, what point on this parabola is closest to this one? That's what we're looking for. We'll call this distance here D. All right. So what is, what's the coordinates of this point? Well, the coordinates of this point is x, y, right? We don't know. So we could write it as x, y, but couldn't we also say that point is x, y, right? x, y, but what is y? y is x squared. So, so we'll call this point x, x squared. Now, how do you find the distance between two points? Well, it's y2 minus y1, or x2 minus x1 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right? And it's the square root of all that. So the distance is equal to, that's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and it is the square root of all of that. That's our uh, that's our equation. Okay? It's the distance formula. That's all it is, distance formula. So let's full let's multiply these out. Remember this is x minus six times x minus six and this is x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 3. We're going to fold those out. So we get d is equal to this x squared minus 12, minus 12x 12 plus 36 plus x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 9. And it's the square root of all that. And so D is equal to the square root of, combine like terms, x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 12x plus 45. All right. And now we need to take the derivative of this thing. Now, I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos but I have a shortcut for finding the derivative of a square root function, okay? I'll explain it real quick here, and it's not difficult to do, but if you want to watch the video, just Google, just, just search my channel, shortcut for finding derivative of square root, search it for that, and the video will come up, and I explain it in more detail, but, I mean, it's not difficult to do. So whenever you take the derivative of a square root, you can do two times whatever the square root is. And keep in mind, this only works with square roots. Okay, so it's just two times whatever that is. And then what goes in the numerator? Well, the derivative of what's underneath the square root. So that's going to be 4x cubed minus 10x minus 12. And so there's your derivative. All right, so now what do we have to do? 
Well, now we have to set the derivative equal to zero. Okay, so set the derivative equal to zero. And so that's going to be 4x cubed minus 10x minus 12 equals zero. Now remember, remember, a fraction is zero when the numerator is zero. So we just set the numerator equal to zero. And we can go ahead and divide everything by two, divide each term by two. So that's going to be 2x cubed minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Okay, now here we go. Now, I don't know how many of you have had this and how many of you haven't. But this is solving a polynomial. Okay, this is, this is, a, this is different than what you're used to. Okay, this is not a quadratic. We can't plug it in a quadratic formula or anything, but there's a method to solving these polynomials. And you can, if you want more detail on it, just search my channel, Solving Polynomial Equations. And it goes into more detail with this. And I've got several videos on that with exam, you know, several examples you can watch. All right, so we've got to list the factors of P and the factors of Q. Okay, factors of P and factors of Q. So this term here is Q. This term here is P. So what are the what are the factors of P? What all can I multiply together to get six? One times six, two times three, right? Or negative 1 times negative 6, negative 2 times, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me start over. What can you multiply together to get negative 6? Not positive, negative 6. Well, negative 1 times 6, 1 times negative 6, 2 times negative 3, negative 2 times positive 3, okay? So that's the different factors, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. And what about Q? Everything I can multiply together to get 2. Well, that's plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. And then the possible solutions, the possible solutions are going to be P over Q. And so that's going to be 1 over 1, 1 over 2 with the plus or minus. So that's, why did I put plus or minus there? That's going to be plus or minus 1 plus or minus one half. And then you take the two and put it over each one. So that's gonna be plus or minus two. And then two over two is just one. And then three over one, plus or minus three, plus or minus three halves. And then the six, that's gonna be plus or minus six. And then six over two is three. We already have that one, okay? All right, so now what you wanna do is you want to test to see which one it is. And like I said, I'm running through this real quick. But this is synthetic division. You can Google my, uh, or not, I don't know why I keep saying Google, but you can search my channel for synthetic division and watch the video on that. I've got a video on that. But that's 2, 0, negative 5, negative 6. We just, we list the factors of the polynomial. It needs to be in descending power. We're missing the x squared term, so we put a zero in the place. And then what you do is you put the one there, and you test it out, and you need to get a zero as a remainder. And if that doesn't work, then you try the negative one. Then you go to the one half, then the negative one half, and then the two, the negative two. You got to keep trying until you find one that works. It's like trial and error. But luckily for you, we're not going to do that because two works. Okay. So I take the two, and what we do is we bring this two down. This 2 comes down. 2 times 2 is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. All right. So what this does is if we divided this by x minus 2, from this we get x minus 2. Okay. And, and I'm not really explaining it in detail. Go watch the video. Explain, it explains it in more detail. 
but you get x minus 2 times, and then here's your polynomial. That's, what did we start with? x cubed, so that's going to be 2x squared plus 4x plus 3 equal 0. And so I've got x minus 2 equals 0, or 2x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So we get x equal 2. Now, if we solve this one, we would get an imaginary solution. Okay? So we don't have to worry about that one. We would get an imaginary. You can throw this in the quadratic formula, and you would get an answer with, an, with i. All right? And we can test, we can test the two, you know, on the number line, two, break it up into the regions, plug it into here, and we would get a decreasing and an increasing. It would show it's a relative minimum. It's a, because that's what we want. We want the shortest distance. And so remember, our function is y equals x squared. We want that, that that's what we're looking for. This, this point here. And so the x coordinate is 2, and the y coordinate, we plug the 2 into there, 4. So it would be the point 2, 4. Okay? So, yeah, that, that problem, it would, that problem's a little more, is probably the toughest one we've worked so far. And, you know, like I said, this solving these polynomials, uh, it's actually something you're already supposed to know how to do when you get to calculus. So that's why I just kind of rushed through it. But like I said, go watch my videos. I have videos explaining how to do this in more detail. All right. And, and you may need to, uh, if you watch those on how to solve that polynomial, you may need to watch the videos on synthetic division first so you'll understand how to do synthetic division. All right. All right, so let's look at this one. So we've got a company determines that it can sell 1,000 units of a product per month if the price is $5 for each unit. It also estimates that for each one cent reduction in unit price, 10 more units can be sold. So each time we reduce it by a cent, they'll sell 10 more units. Under these conditions, what is the maximum possible income and what price per unit gives this income? All right. So this is this is a business problem. The the business problems that they tend to be a little more difficult to set up, but they're, they're, they're not too bad. All right. So let's let's see what we've got here. It, so it can sell a thousand units of product per month if the price is five dollars for each unit. But if for each one cent re in reduction, there's 10 more units can be sold. Okay. All right. So let's let X equal number of units over 1,000 sold. All right. And then what else are we going to need to do? They want to know the maximum possible income. So, you know, income is the, that's going to be the price times the number of units sold. But remember, X is the number of units over 1,000, but we need a total number of units sold. So the total number of units sold is going to be the 1,000 plus X is total number of units sold okay and then and then remember the the price the price for each unit is five dollars minus or five dollars less one cent for each block of 10 units over a thousand that are sold. 
Okay. So, so all I did, I just kind of wrote this down. So whenever we reduce it by one cent, see the price is five dollars, but when we reduce it by one cent, we sell ten more units above the one thousand. Okay. All right. So, so what would be the price? So the price is equal to what? Five minus, right? Five minus. All right. For for each one cent reduction, ten more are sold. So we've got to write that down. Um, that's going to be. 0 0.01, that's one cent, times x over 10. Okay, so, so, so let's look at this. This is the number of units over 1,000. That's x. So if that is 10, then it's 5 minus 1 cent. If this is 20, then that's 2 blocks of 10 over, right? So that's going to be 5 minus 2 cents. And this is 30. That means we reduced it by three cents and so on okay and so this is basically equal to five minus and if we do 0 0.01 divided by 10 that's going to be 0 0.001 x all right so that's that's the price all right so remember the income is the number of units sold times the price of each unit. That's the income, right? And so basically we have I is number of units sold. That's uh, the total number of units sold, which is 1,000 plus X. So that's 1,000 plus X times the price of each unit. That's going to be 5 minus the 0.001x. All right. And so let's go ahead and fold that out. So I get I equals, when you fold that out, you end up with 5,000 plus 4x minus 0.001x squared. And so let's take the derivative. So I prime is going to be 4 minus 0 0.002x. So 4 minus 0 0.002x equals 0. 4 equals, this is a 0 here, is going to be 0 0.002x. And so x is 4 over 0 0.002. And that ends up being 2,000, let me check, 4 divided by 0 0.002 is 2,000, all right? Now, let's, let's, let's go back and, and see what we're, see what they're asking us to find, okay? And, and would this be a maximum? You know, look, if, if you did the 2,000 here and you did the 1, nine 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 and then two thousand one it would be increasing and decreasing it would be a maximum okay so let's see it says what is the maximum possible income and what price per unit gives this income all right so the maximum income that's that's this right here. We, we can plug it into here. So the maximum income would be X would be 2,000. We plug it into that. That's going to be 1,000 plus 2,000 times 5 minus 0 0.001 times 2,000. Okay. Whoop. I'm sorry. 2,000 squared. And so... This would give us I is equal to, that's going to be $9,000. And then what is the price? Well, remember the price, I mean, it's up here. It's right here, 5 minus that. 
which is that, but the price, we'll just call that P, is 5 minus 0 0.001 times 2,000, and that ends up being, whoop, that ends up being $3. Yeah, that's a dollar sign. But, I mean, how many units did we sell? We sold a total of 3,000, because this is, this is 2,000 above the 1,000. Remember, X is the number of units over 1,000 sold, so we sold a total of 3,000. But this would be the maximum income, and that would be the price for the maximum income. All right? So, yeah, th that, one's a, that one was a little different, so, but not, still not bad. All right, two more problems. If you're still watching, might as well hang around for the last two. All right. Find the dimension of a 700 kiloliter cylindrical oil, oil storage tank that can be made with the least cost of sheet metal, assuming there is no wasted sheet metal. Okay, so let's let's draw a picture. We've got a we've got a cylinder here. We've got a radius R, we've got a height, okay? And we want to, the least cost of sheet metal. So that mean, that probably means we want to, we want to use the least amount of area, right? The surface area. So the surface area, that's going to be the area of the bottom, the area of the top. Well, these are circles, so the area of the circle is pi r squared, and we've got two of them. And then the surface area going around the cylinder part. Well, remember, if you have a cylinder and you cut it in half, if you cut it in half and fold it out, it folds out to be a rectangle. So it's, it's this distance here times, see, there's the height. But what's this distance here when we unroll it? Well, that's just the circumference, right? What's the circumference of the circle? Well, it's pi times the diameter or 2 pi times the radius. Pi times the diameter or pi times twice the radius. And then, of course, times the height. Okay? So that's our, that's our area there. That's our surface area. Now, Remember what we talked about. We want to get everything in terms of one variable. Well, I'm in, I've got an R and an H. So let's see what we can do here. It says find the dimensions. Oh, okay, so they give us the volume. They tell us the volume is 700 kiloliters. So what's the volume of a cylinder? Well, it's the area of the base, pi R squared times the height, right? which this is 700 is equal to pi r squared h. And so what I'm going to do, because it, it'd just be, it's easier to do it, solve this thing for h and plug it into here. And so now I get h is equal to 700 over pi r squared. So now we can take this and plug it in for h. And so I get area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 700 over pi r squared. And so I get a is 2 pi r squared plus 2 times 700. That's 1400. The pi's cancel. One of the r's cancels down here. That's over r. And so now we are ready to find the uh, derivative. And so I've got a prime is 4 pi r minus, and then the derivative of this. Remember, you can just do this, rewrite this to the negative 1. The negative 1 comes down, r to the negative 2. So see that minus, there's the minus, and then that's just 1400 over r squared. And so let's set this equal to 0. And so I've got 4 pi r minus 1400 over r squared equals 0. So 4 pi r 
equals 1400 over r squared. Look at there, we cross multiply. So this will come up here, this will go down here, and so that's just going to be r squared is 1400 over 4 pi. Oh, I'm sorry. That is going to be r cubed, r squared times r. And so that's going to give me r is the cube root of 1400 over 4 pi. Plug that into your calculator, you're going to get about 4.81 meters. And yes, you can test that it's a, that it's a minimum. So it, so if you plot it, it should be decreasing, increasing. And so that's the that's the radius. And then we need the height. So the height is 700 over pi times r squared. Well, there's r, 4.81 squared. And that comes out to be 9.62 meters. Okay. All right. So, and you know, if when, when you're when you're working this, I don't know. You may want to take the whole thing here and plug it in for R. I just took the estimated. If you're doing if you're doing this in some online homework, and I know web work does this does this quite a bit. If you if when you start rounding and stuff, or if you don't round to enough places. Or carry out enough decimals, it'll tell you it's wrong when it's right. It's just telling you it's wrong because of rounding error. So you know, you might want to consider just plugging in that whole thing, or using more than two decimal places to plug in for R. All right, all right. So we are at the last problem now. So let's take a look at this one. So it says the illuminance of a light source at any point equals the strength of the source divided by the square of the distance from the source. Two sources of strengths, eight units and one unit respectively, are 100 meters apart. Determine at what point between them the illuminance is the least, assuming that the illuminance at any point is the sum of the illuminances of the two sources. That's a mouthful there, isn't it? All right. So, so, so basically, you have you have two sources of strengths eight and one. Okay. And so, you know, just say you're here and here. This is the eight unit. This is the one unit. And we know that in between them, that is a hundred meters. So, you know, if we, if we pick a point in between them and we call this distance x, this distance is 100 minus x. So, uh, so what do we do? It says the illuminance of a light source at any point equals the strength of the source divided by the square of the distance from the source. So two sources, respectively, 100 meters apart, Determine at what point between them the illuminance is the least, assuming that the illuminance at any point is the sum of the illuminances of the two sources. So we'll say we got the illuminance, and then it's the sum of the two sources. So it's the one, the one with eight units over the distance squared, plus the one unit over the distance squared. So there you go. There's your equation. So now we've got to take the derivative, but before we take the derivative, let's go ahead and just write this, rewrite it so we can just use the uh, power rule and the and the chain rule pretty easy. Okay, so now let's take the derivative. So i prime is negative 16x to the negative 3 whoop, not plus, the negative 2 comes down, 100 minus x to the negative 3, and then don't forget times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, which is negative 1, and so I get i prime is negative 16 over x cubed, uh, plus the negative and negative, that's going to be 2 over 100 minus x cubed. All right. All right, 
Now, we've got to set this equal to zero and solve for x, but I think the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and combine these. And so I'm going to get i prime is, so we, we're going to get a, a common denominator here of x cubed times 100 minus x cubed. And so what do I multiply to this? This, so that's going to be negative 16 times 100 minus x cubed, and then plus 2 times the x cubed. And so that's going to give me, uh, well, that's, that's it. Now we've got to set this thing equal to zero. But remember, remember, whenever you set this equal to zero, you just need to set the numerator equal to zero because that's when a fraction is, uh, is zero. And so I'm going to set the numerator equal to zero, and I'm going to write it 2x cubed minus 16 times 100 minus x cubed equals zero. All right, so how in the world are we gonna gonna solve this thing? Well, don't don't make this more difficult than what it is. In other words, I probably know what some of you are thinking about. You're gonna write this out: 100 minus x times 100 minus x times 100 minus x, and multiply it all out. You don't need to do that. Look, 2x cubed equals. Just move that over. 16 times 100 minus x cubed. Divide everything by 2. That's going to be x cubed equals 8 times 100 minus x cubed. And then what can we do? We can take the cube root of both sides. So that's going to be x cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of that is 100 minus x. So I get x equals 200 minus 2x. 3x equals 200. And so I get x equals 200 over 3, which is about 66.7. And that's meters from the what? The 8 unit source, right? So that's x. That's the distance here from the 8 unit source. And so that's your answer right there. All right, so we, we got a lot of problems in. Uh, you know, it's, it's what it is. Uh, some of the problems are some of the problems are more difficult to work than others, but you know, the main thing is, well, I think the hardest thing is for the problems, the hardest thing is going to be just getting the equation on some of them. So that's what you're going to have to practice. Okay. But I hope the video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I will see y'all in the next one. Later.